Hi, it's David and I'll uh, get right into it. I am over here in the country of Cambodia looking at some property investments, but I wanted to do this video about this uh, banking crisis in the United States, whether it's going to spread to Great Britain. And uh, it's interesting, I come over here, I'm usually doing videos in the country of Georgia, where I'm primarily based, talking to a British audience. But, uh, you know, come over here to look to sort of diversify a little bit out of the Western financial system, wondering if, uh, you know, I'm going over the top with risk being risk averse. And yet, as soon as they get here, there's like a big banking crisis in the United States. And, uh, you know, people saying to me, like, David, what's going to happen with my um, investments in Britain? What's going to happen with my money in the bank in Britain? Is it safe? All this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I think it's just a sign of the times. I mean, I started doing these videos during lockdown, talking about the economic consequences of lockdown. And here we are, three years later, um, they're coming here. Um, we're getting a lot of problems with um, runs on the bank. The Federal Reserve has come out and said they're gonna backstop the system. It was just deposits under $250,000. Now it's deposits up to any, any amount that you have. It's Silicon Valley Bank, but there's been other banks that have been going down around Silicon Valley. There was Silvergate last Wednesday. Uh, there's also been First Republic Bank um, out of San Francisco, and then there was another bank in New York, I think it's called Stargate or something like that. Um, so a lot of problems happening in the US. Uh, in Britain, Jeremy Hunt came out and said that, um, you know, the SVP depositors in Britain or Britain-based will be bailed out by British taxpayers. So you have a situation where um, poor performance or poor management by an American bank costs British taxpayers. You know, what do you think about that? Do you think that's fair? Um, there's a lot of other things sort of happening um, in the media to distract people, I think, from this uh, sort of uh, series of uh, unfolding events in the financial system. There's been all this Gary Lineker stuff. Uh, it's just a bunch of nonsense and, um, you know, more transgender nonsense. And so for you, as an individual watching this video, you're going to be asking, yeah, it's great, David, but what's, how does this help me? What do I need to do? And, uh, you know, I don't want to give anyone financial advice, but I can talk about common sense. And, uh, you know, common sense is really about diversifying uh, in terms of assets. You know, looking at the inflation rate, do you want to be having money uh, or your wealth in cash where it can be inflated away? Do you want to have your wealth in assets that you hold, that you control? Uh, I'm talking about small things, you know, uh, garden tools, uh, lawn mowers, things that are just total basic things, motorbikes, things that have practical use, um, but that you hold and control rather than digits on a screen in your online bank accounts or on your online app with your bank. Um, I think there's been so much uh, money printing going on uh, since the 2008 financial crisis, but particularly since the 2020 quote unquote health crisis. And um, just gonna walk outside this complex here. That, uh, you know, people need to understand what's going on. I mean, I have a degree in economics. I got a pretty good idea what's happening in the financial system. I remember well the um, 2008 financial collapse. And um, I think that those lessons from that time are repeating themselves now and um, you know everyone needs to get focused on it and they need to um, look and learn those lessons uh, why do you want to have a situation where hey there, why do you want to have a situation where you're leaving your money in a bank that can just collapse out of nowhere um, same with the health crisis the lesson was what's the point of setting up a small business if uh, you know you can just be locked down at any time so i'm trying to diversify out of the western financial system that's just a choice i'm making other people say well look we love britain we want to invest here and uh, i totally respect that but uh, diversification is key assets you hold a key and uh, that's my message in this video yes the um, american banking collapse uh, contagion uh, i think will be uh, sort of backstopped by the Federal Reserve for a short period of time. I'm talking a few weeks or a few months, but uh, it'll rear its head again with more banks later in the year. And I think this will just run on and on until a new 
um, currency is introduced, a new CBDC uh, where they can track and trace every single movement of yours. There's also been a lot of de-dollarizing uh, outside of um, America by countries holding dollars, um, Saudi Arabia, India, um, Pakistan, uh, well, Japan to a lesser extent. Um, there's this new deal with Saudi Arabia and Iran, um, the BRICS nations, Russia, looking to get out of dollars, dump dollars, send the dollars back to the USA. It's gonna be more inflation there and uh, currencies or countries tied closely to America like Great Britain are gonna be very adversely affected. So I think that uh, you as an individual need to be very, very concerned about this. This needs to be the most important thing you focus on uh, in terms of making sure your money is protected, your wealth is protected, and not uh, assuming that these problems that you're seeing in the US that aren't really being covered particularly heavily in the news are very, very serious and um, you know need to be um, closely uh, investigated and researched and focused by you and uh, to, to protect your, your wealth and your assets. Another thing I wanted to mention in this video, and I've been a bit remiss because I've been traveling, but all this Matt Hancock stuff, I mean, Alison Pearson in the Daily Telegraph about seven or eight days ago was talking about whether Matt Hancock should be prosecuted criminally for uh, sort of neglect in public office and willful neglect, I think was the phrase she used. And uh, yeah, I'm all for that. I mean, I called for this three years ago. I'm like way ahead of the game. The Telegraph is three years behind me, uh, but it's not the willful neglect or the, um, you know, killing people in the care home stuff. It's the violation of British civil liberties. That's the crime. If that crime was, uh, you know, prevented or criminal um, actions were enforced for violations of the English Bill of Rights, none of this health crisis stuff would have happened. None of the, um, you know, massive uh, money printing and bailouts of the financial system in 2020 would have happened. And, um, you know, none of the problems we're seeing now would, uh, be occurring. I mean, actually, the financial system would have collapsed, but the collapse being prevented is just going to lead to a worse financial crisis later on. And, uh, you know, we have to have um, real money. We have to have a financial system with integrity, where money means money, where labor equals labor, um, where um, trade for goods is fair. It's not that one uh, group of people can print money to buy the labor uh, of goods produced by other people for nothing, for no uh, contribution themselves. So we need to get back to a fair financial system, get back to a system where British civil liberties are respected and uh, people who violate those rules, like Matt Hancock, like the British government, get totally criminally prosecuted, where they should be presumed innocent until proven guilty. They should have a right to a defense, but uh, you know, if convicted, obviously they'd be punished under the law. And uh, Alison Pearson was dancing around that fundamental subject. Um, I think there's a lot of effort to pin the blame on Matt Hancock as a sacrificial lamb for the lockdown, rather than get to the root of um, the, the, gov the entire government violating civil liberties, which is what I said three years ago this month. So I hope you like these videos. I'm in a bit of a different location for, for a short while, but um, you know, looking to come up with ideas for you about uh, where else you can uh, divest uh, wealth and where you can potentially move to or relocate temporarily or permanently. Cambodia is a great place, um, somewhere I'm exploring and learning about, uh, but uh, back to Georgia here uh, in a week or two. So uh, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and we'll talk to you soon.